Right. I want to make sure we're live. Hi, everybody. How's it going? All right, here we are. Let's see, I want to make sure we're working over here. Sorry, Instagram friends. Hi, everyone. All right, let's see. Today, we're going to do a really fun craft. We're going to make a market squid while I teach you all about their adaptations. It looks like I am live on Facebook, but let me see. For some reason, I can't see myself. If my Facebook people are watching, can you see me and hear me? Hmm. Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. It's Angie here. I'm just trying to get our Facebook audience set up, so give me a moment. Let me check something out really quick. There we go. Okay, I think it's working. Yay, hi everybody. I can't see me, but as long as you can see me, <laughs> that's a good thing. Um, hi, welcome to MPA Monday or Marine Ecosystem Monday. I'm Angie and I'm an interpreter for California State Parks and for those of you who have been following along for a few weeks or maybe a few months at this point, you know that we do live streams every single day of the week at three o'clock and we have different interpreters from around the district, uh, the North Coast Redwoods District, to bring you all sorts of amazing content while we know lots of you are at home. So we hope that you found these live streams to be enjoyable and fun. And I have something new and fun to do with all of you today, and I'm excited to share what it is. Maybe you saw our Facebook or Instagram post about it, but we're going to do a little craft while we learn about cephalopods. So this right here is a homemade market squid that I'm gonna teach everybody how to make today. It's a super fun, easy craft, and it's a fun way to learn about these amazing animals. So um, this is a market squid, and we're going to make it. So I'll show you the things that you need. Um, it was also posted in our event, so hopefully you saw that beforehand and had a chance to grab all the things you needed. First, you're going to need two toilet paper rolls, like this. They're not um, attached. They're separate. Um, I also have some paints here, any kind of paints you have or just markers or crayons or whatever. I also have some string for our arms and tentacles. And I have a paintbrush as well as a marker. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Oh, and then also a hole punch if you have one. I actually forgot my hole punch, so um, I went ahead and punched holes in mine beforehand. But if you do have a hole punch, that will be useful for you today. So. Fun facts about cephalopods, here's our cephalopod, our market squid that we're going to make, is they are a, uh, basically cephalopods are active predatory mollusks, and they're pretty common in California. So we're going to talk about how they live in marine protected areas, and how they live off the coast, and how we use them a little bit. So generally, these animals live between um, Alaska and Baja, California. So they have a pretty large range. And they're really common around the central coast, around the Monterey Bay. And um, yeah, they're pretty cool animals. I have personally never seen one in the wild, despite all the times that I've hung out in the ocean in California. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen one. But um, they are super cool. And I wanted to share some fun facts with them, about them with you while we craft today. So I'm going to go ahead and get our supplies ready. And um, I actually can't see the preview on Facebook. So I'm going to kind of look over here to make sure it's pointing in the right direction. So hang on for just a moment. Yay, it looks like everybody is seeing me and hearing me. So that's cool. Um, I have all my supplies here. And I drew a little diagram. Hopefully my Facebook people can see me for some reason. Let's see. I'm not sure why I can't see myself, but so I won't be able to really tell 
where what you can see and what you can't see. But I drew this fun diagram, and it labels the different parts of a squid. So um, we have our fins, which are going to be these parts of our little craft right here. Or they're also called wings. Um, we also have our mantle, which is like our main body, which is going to be uh, the first, this toilet paper roll right here. We're going to paint some spots on our squid, as you can see I've done in the example. These are called chromatophores, and I'm going to talk about them kind of as we work on them. And um, what else are we going to have? We're going to attach eight arms to our squid, because they have eight arms, but they also have two tentacles, which are longer. And we're gonna we're gonna have two longer strings <laughs> for our tentacles. So check that out. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a toilet paper roll. Um, I'm sure everybody has these around their house. And I'm actually gonna paint this. So you get to go through the therapeutic experience of watching me paint this. And if you're following along at home or crafting at home, um, get your paints out. I have a little tray to put my paint in. Da -da -da -da, so it doesn't get everywhere. And I'm going to make the base of mine white, but you can really do whatever color you want. It doesn't have to be scientifically accurate. <laughs> and if you have any questions about squid, I will do my best to answer them. I'm glad everybody's tuning in. Uh, we know that this is a very um, crazy time that we're living in. And we hope that these moments of 3 o'clock uh, distraction and engagement are helpful for you during this time. If you've been following along, you know that State Parks is really excited to to kind of be providing more digital opportunities right now. And um, we're doing our part to keep our community safe and the people that we work with safe and um, all that good stuff by washing our hands a lot, using hand sanitizer, practicing good physical distancing, and um, sanitizing all of our equipment and stuff like that. So we are absolutely taking precautions um, just like all of you are. So we want to thank you for doing that. Alrighty, so here we have Facebook. Let me know if you can't see me. Looks like maybe you can. Um, I've almost covered my first toilet paper roll, which is going to be our mantle, as you can see on our diagram. This is basically like the main body cavity of this animal, the market squid. <laughs> and once that's all covered in paint, I'm going to set it down, maybe not directly on your table, but on a piece of paper or something else. And we are going to take our other toilet paper roll and do the same thing. So go ahead and paint that white as well. One of them is going to have some holes put in it using a hole punch that maybe you have, <laughs> even though I don't have one. Um, but you can see here, we have some holes in this one. And today, I am sitting on the edge of the Humboldt Bay. And I don't think market squid are going to be found in the Humboldt Bay, but um, they are absolutely found in the Pacific Ocean, which is connected to the Humboldt Bay. So. This is uh, what we're working with today. And I just wanted to do a quick shout out as well that next week on Monday, June 8th, is World Oceans Day. So if you've been following along, you know I'm a big fan of the ocean. Uh, and I will be celebrating World Oceans Day with some other state park interpreters this year, doing lots of fun events online. So stay tuned for that. I'll be hosting my regular 3 p.m. live stream as well as a few other programs during the day. So stay tuned. And do what you can on your own to celebrate World Oceans Day as well. Maybe um, if you live near a beach, head to the beach and do a beach cleanup, or um, take a pledge to use less plastic. There's so many things you can do to help the ocean. Um, and I know many of us are doing our part to combat climate change right now by not commuting a whole lot, so that's awesome. All righty, my friends. Now we have our two toilet paper rolls painted white. Generally, these animals, oh, you know what? I should show you the picture that I have of what these animals look like. So here they are. They're pretty small. This photo is borrowed from Sea Grant, California Sea Grant. So thank you for the awesome photo. But maybe you can see 
the resemblance. <laughs> Let's see Facebook. Let me try and get this to you. Okay, so that's our market squid. Um, these are super duper cool animals. And one thing that I have seen of them in the wild is their egg cases. And I want to show you a picture of what that looks like because I think it's really neat. So I'm showing you on a digital thing. Hopefully it'll come up. But we have a little market squid in the picture. And then you can see all those white sort of um, almost hot dog shaped little things are the egg cases of the market squid. And inside one of those egg cases can be 200 to 300 um, little eggs, which is super neat. So if you see those, maybe you're a scuba diver or maybe you're walking on the beach, sometimes they, they wash up on shore and they could totally be an, a market squid egg casing if you see that. And let's see. Okay, so now our two toilet paper rolls are almost dry. And one of them is actually going to be cut into sort of a diamond shape like this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one just down the side. These are super fun crafts to do with kids. So if there's kids out there, hey, thanks for crafting with me. Um, and if not, go ahead and share this video with with people you know that maybe have kiddos at home that are looking for some fun arts and craft projects to do. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one in sort of a diamond shape to represent the wings of our market squid. And the rest I'm just going to put, put aside because we're not going to use it today. Okay, so now we have our toilet paper roll and our little wings that we're going to put in. What we're going to do next is actually paint some chromatophores onto the body of this animal. And chromatophores are really cool. They're basically um, tools or adaptations that cephalopods have to camouflage. So they're basically masters of camouflage. And there are these little cells in their body that are sort of like water balloons filled with colored pigment. And uh, when the animal needs to camouflage or wants to change its color or even its texture of its body, those water balloon uh, filled pigment uh, cells in their body actually expand and contract. So um, when they're feeling really colorful, those are really expanded, and um, sometimes they just come off as little black dots as well. So we'll, we'll do a healthy mix of some colored dots on our market squid's body here. So I'm going to use purple and blue. On this one, I use brown and silver, but you can do whatever colors you like. You can also do this with a marker. And I highly recommend that you check out a video of chromatophores in action. So, um, well, I guess I'll say that cephalopods are squid, octopus, and cuttlefish. And these animals, watching their chromatophores, those colorful cells kind of expanding and contracting up close is super duper neat. So I highly recommend you check it out. There's an amazing video on PBS about it. I'm going to make my chromatophores right now. I'm just going to make some little dots. on my wings and on my mantle. Hi, everybody. Yay, happy Monday. Thanks for being here. Good question. Somebody asked, how do they get a name like market? That's an amazing question. Thanks for asking that. Um, these squid are actually a very popular food item and an export from California's coast. So another reason why it's important to have places where they're safe, like marine protected areas, um, these are animals that we often eat. Maybe you've eaten squid before. Um, and so I assume maybe their name market comes from the fact that they're often sell sold in markets. I actually don't know exactly where that comes from, but that would be my best guess. All right, so I'm adding my chromatophores onto my mantle, or kind of like the main body 
of my squid. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. And here, like I said, mine are purple and blue, but you can do any colors you like. And then one other thing I'm going to add on here before I let it dry for good is two eyes. So you can see on our example, we have nice big blue eyes. So I'm going to add some here. I don't know about all of you, but I love to be creative, especially at times when maybe we are inside a lot. We just had a big storm up here, so we had a long weekend of rain. And it was great to do some, some crafts and creative things around the house and inside the house. So I hope this is a fun <laughs> outlet for all of you while you're spending time at home, while all of us are at home. Okay, so I've added two big blue circles for eyes. And then I'm going to use my marker, once it's dry, to add on some pupils there. Alrighty, so one thing about that I'm going to show you on our example here is our mantle that has all of our chromatophores and our big eyes um, is going to be cut in two places. So basically on either side, just like about an inch um, deep so that we can fit our um, wings inside. So I'd do it just sort of above the eyes, about an inch like this. Hopefully everyone can see that. And then flip it around, go the other way. Oops. Yeah, that should work. Alrighty. And then basically what you can do is flip your, my placement was a little off. There we go. Flip your wings right in there. <laughs> right? Look at that. We're getting closer and closer <laughs> to making our market squid. Yeah, somebody said calamari. Calamari is squid, everybody, if you didn't know. Okie doke. So here we have our most of our craft. We're almost done. I'm going to let this dry for a moment. And let's talk about arms and tentacles. So. Does anybody know, anybody watching out there who can comment, um, does anybody know the difference between arms and tentacles when it comes to cephalopods? Very curious if anybody knows. While I wait for some people to respond, I'll just let you know that I have eight kind of short pieces of string. You can use any kind of string. On this one I have gray string, this one I have white string, whatever you got. And I've cut them to about the same length. And these eight pieces of string are going to represent our arms of our squid. Doesn't look like anybody's responded yet, but um, our arms are going to be kind of what you think of when you think of an octopus having long, eight long arms. Some people often call them tentacles, even though they are arms. And the difference is that our arms well, the arms of cephalopods have two suction rows of suction cups in some cases, um, all the way from the tip to the body. And those suckers, that's what they're called, go along that entire length. Okay, so that's an arm. And then a tentacle is generally a bit longer and only has suckers at the very end. So I'll go ahead and show you the difference here in our diagram. Here's our arm with those suckers from kind of the, the base to the very tip of the arm. And then our tentacles are here, and this is where our suckers would be at the very end. Hopefully our Facebook people can see that. So I'm going to attach our eight arms and our two tentacles. You're going to have two maybe longer pieces of thread. And generally what I'm doing is folding the string in half and then taking this folded bit and pushing it through one of the holes. I forgot to mention that um, you're gonna wanna punch holes at the base of your mantle. That's where your arms and tentacles are going to attach. I don't have my hole punch, so I went ahead and did it before this, but if you have a hole punch, that's what you're gonna do. And of course, eight plus two is 
10. So you're going to punch 10 holes for eight arms and two tentacles. I'm curious if anybody has ever seen a market squid or seen their eggs before. And if so, where? And it's funny because actually squid are not the best swimmers. They actually swim backwards and they sort of propel themselves through the water using something called a siphon, which is sort of um, a structure that basically uses bursts of water that it expels from its body to move around. Let's see here. Move this out of the way. Again, folding this in half, taking that folded end and sticking that through the hole. Alrighty. Okay, we've got three. Going to keep going here. And one common question that people always ask me is, what kind of food do they eat? And our squid are going to eat things like small fish, crabs, shrimp, um, and sometimes even other squid. So they actually eat. Uh, similar seafood diet to what humans eat, if you do eat seafood. Um, and the octopus diet varies a little bit from the squid because, um, well, there's kind of two types of octopus, some that kind of are bottom dwellers, and they will eat things like worms and crustaceans and clams, things that might be buried in the sand or buried in the bottom of um, the ocean floor. And then there's sort of more pelagic um, octopus that will eat things like prawns and shrimp and other cephalopods. Pretty cool. So I would say the most challenging part of this craft is getting the arms and tentacles attached. So bear with me. Happy June 1st. Happy June, everybody. June is my favorite month, so I'm pretty happy. That it's June. All right, so we're making some progress here. I think these things are so cute. You can also do a little hole punch at the top and hang it in your window or whatever. All righty. Okie doke, okie doke. Okay, I'm still working away down here. I'm using a pen to punch holes in mine. Sometimes you got to get creative, you know? All right. Okie dokie, here we go. Couple more. And then the last finishing touch is going to be adding those black circles into our eyes to give them a little bit of character. All righty, here we go. And one more tentacle. Remember, these are a little bit longer, only have suckers on the end. 
if you're really fancy, you might even add something to represent those suckers um, onto your arms and your tentacles. Okay, here we are. Alrighty, so the last thing I'm going to do, <laughs> I think these are really cute, um, is add some little black pupils into its eyes to give it some character. So you can see our example here looks really cute and looks just like a market squid that you can see here. Okay, let's do it. Here we go. I'm just going to add some dark eyes in there. Okay, I think we're done. <laughs> we have created our very own cephalopod pet that we can keep at our house. Um, that is made of two toilet paper rolls, some paint, some string, and um, a marker. Pretty easy. So I hope that you learned something new about squid and about cephalopods. And if you did make this, share it with me. I would love to see it and share it with our audience as well. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, as always, we're so grateful for your support. And I am grateful for all the people who have joined us week after week for MPA or Marine Ecosystem Monday. And we can't wait to see you next week. So don't forget to tune in for the rest of the week at 3 p.m. for our live streams. They're going to be mostly on our Facebook page for those of you who are on Instagram. Um, so find us at California State Parks North Coast Redwoods for lots more programs from um, all over our district having uh, on diverse topics. So check it out. Okay, bye everyone.